<laughs> Greetings, everybody. We have a very anticipated comparison video here. My name is Michael. And my name is Peter. We have the Amazon Kindle Fire HDX 8.9. This is the 2014 version that just yes. came out. And the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook 10.1 inch edition. Those names are not easy to no, just say. Not they don't roll off the tongue very easy. The purpose of today's video is to take a look at the ecosystem, the way that you go about getting new apps and new books, but we'll also look at the UI. But most importantly, how great do comics, newspapers, magazines, and most importantly, ebooks actually show up in portrait mode? We're going to look at all this and more. But first of all, Peter, these two devices are very different when it comes to the hardware. Show us. Although this does say Samsung, this is indeed a Barnes & Noble release device. This is because it comes with Barnes & Noble software preloaded on there. So you have the Samsung logoing, camera on the front, camera on the back. You have the back button, multi-window, and the home button. All the good stuff happens upstairs here. We have the power button volume up and down, micro SD card, sensors, headphone jacks, speakers on the side, and a micro USB port on the bottom. The back is very nice hard plastic, and like I said, you have your camera there. The Kindle looks a little bit different because it's pure black. It's a very interesting design. It has this rubber hard plastic kind of bezel around the screen bezel. It's perfectly flush. Now you notice that it doesn't have the same type of buttons that the Nook right. had, like the physical home button menu and things right, like that. Right, exactly. It has no buttons. Camera up top, light sensor, 3.5mm headphone jack on the left, micro USB on the right. You have a nice angled piano finish kind of cluster of stuff here. You have a camera, flash, stereo speakers, flat volume up and down, and a power button on the side there. Fundamentally, these two tablets are very different in the way that they present Android 4.4, otherwise known as KitKats, which both of these actually run. Amazon in their entire tablet career has always had skinned, and not just skin, but heavily skin versions of Android. So this does not look like anything that you would buy from Sony or LG or your uh, Google Nexus tablets of the world, which is as vanilla as it gets. Amazon builds their OS as Sangria. So it'll run most Android apps, but you're pretty well locked into dealing with Amazon. Whereas with the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet, it's using a, a version of TouchWiz, which is what Samsung has always used in all of their tablets. But what Barnes & Noble has done is create a series of apps for Android so it could this tablet can be built as like a Nook tablet because it has special widgets. It has like your Nook library and, and various settings and things like that. So Peter, what exactly is Firefly? Firefly is an interesting service that um, allows you to take pictures of things like if you have a smartphone, you can put your smartphone on a table, point your camera at it with your Amazon Fire Phone or your uh, tablet and it IDs what it is, it finds where you can buy it, and it shows you search options. So uh, internet search options, Amazon Marketplace, and so forth. So it's a very interesting way to identify certain barcodes, um, items, and so forth. And Mayday is a feature where you can actually click on it and a square will open up on the bottom with an actual Amazon customer service representative who helps you with different questions and functionalities of your device. With the Nook tablet, like I said, it's not as heavily skinned, so you can install your own widgets from like Google. And it's important to note Google because Barnes Noble signed a partnership agreement with Google about a year or two ago, it seems. And what this means is that you're not totally reliant on dealing with the Barnes & Noble's own app store, but you can actually deal with Google Play as well. Um, but let's take a look at the Barnes & Noble, uh, the ecosystem. This is the way Amazon lays out their shop. You have some uh, stuff at the bottom on a little carousel. You have apps. So these will be the default ways they show everything. It's very dark and black and gray as you can see here. They're using a white background conventionally. 
it seems as though that you know if we look at this page that they do not make very good use of their space yeah it's My like God. huge Six spaces and a half, so, so, uh, nine and a half apps whereas this is like tons and tons of content yeah i must say that i've always really been a big fan about how amazon uh, organizes their content your standard ebook traditionally you're going to read it in portrait mode like we have it here sometimes you'll want to read it in a two column view in landscape personal opinion for this video we're going to show it to you exclusively in portrait mode right. Text looks pretty good, mm -hmm. but I mean, the benefits of these tablets is being able to optimize the text. Let's take a look at the Kindle optimizations first. We have view, which allows you to change the way it's viewed. So everything changes live. You have different colors of you have green for some reason. You've, I've never seen no. a green background yes, ever. Sepia, black and white are the conventionals along with the white, but don't worry guys. You got this teal pasty green there to save you. That's gross. We have uh, different margins, line spacing, brightness settings, and some font settings as well. You have about uh, what that, seven font settings. And then on the nook, we have different types of colors as well. Browns and tans and stones and all that kind of good stuff. We have different text options. Changes live once more. You also have different types of fonts and um, everything changes live, so it's not too bad at all. We have long press capabilities on both of these. We'll change it back from this stone to a white because it's kind of dimmed out. Uh, we'll look at the keyboards here, seeing that we'll have a good comparison. So we have Amazon's keyboard not wasting any space once again. The keys are touching each other, whereas you have about a two millimeter gap between all the keys here the easier to type i think having that gap here right because it's like it's a, a real key a real keyboard does not have its keys laid out like right. this, like your computer keyboard exactly they're trying to save space because it is running a smaller screen we also have different colors of um highlights and different shares you can share to social media networks search and book dictionaries pretty much the same features laid out in different ways now amazon does have a few exclusives going for it that barnes and noble can't touch x-ray uh, is a feature that allows you to keep track of people places and things in books so for example we want to know what the term brisago means so you can click on that and it shows you every time it's mentioned in the book as well as it's a municipality <laughs> exactly so if you're confused maybe you're juggling four or five books that'll help you out there Goodreads. So we could actually update our reading progress on Goodreads as part of what the Kindle does. Mm -hmm. You could also post it on Facebook and Twitter too right. if you wanted to. Like, hey, I'm 6% done with the World Separate update. And it'll notify Goodreads, but then it'll auto automatically notify your social networking of choice. All right, we have the same magazine here. As you can see that both of these tablets have like a bit of a blank space at the bottom. Mainly it's like for UI and menu elements that like pop up. Otherwise, if you tried to fill that, you'd have to end up stretching the image and that wouldn't look very nice. Right. So what types of options does the HDX offer? So what we have here is if you tap the center of both of these, you, uh, you get a bunch of UI elements here. Uh, if we just double tap, we get a quick zoom. We get pinch and zoom capabilities, page turn, cur uh, page curls and it matters how you hold it now and all that and um oh this has curls too yeah it does so we also have something called browse and this offers something real magazines don't Woo! <laughs> it's a full <laughs> table of contents of where you get to go uh where oh, you want to go it doesn't have multi curl like i could like curl it in one direction in one hand and and like rip the page <laughs> right oh, that'd you be harsh awesome. like <laughs> totally yeah so and you've ruined this magazine. Please click the rebuy. Please repurchase, yeah. <laughs> and then on the um, nook, if you tap the center, you actually get the a little carousel at the bottom, which I think looks a little bit nicer. I think it totally does too. It's a lot quicker to get to as well. Uh, we'll just go back to a page here and we'll just double tap so you guys have a good idea of what the page, what, what the quality looks like. And you pause the video and say, wow, I think the Kindle's better, I think the nook's better, but I like the screen on the nook, but the Kindle, this and that, so... You guys make the ultimate decision. As you can see here, that he kind of initiated. If you double tap anywhere on an article, you get article view. Whereas this, same kind of thing. You can click article view or page view 
via the button at the bottom. Yeah, so it's kind of a way that you strip away all the CSS elements and you just get to, you know, the reading mode. As you can see, color looks really good. I'd probably say that this almost looks a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Oh, can't even zoom I can, in. can get to that level and lock no, it. It's not a I Microsoft can, Surface. I can zoom. And hold it, but when you let go, it snaps. Yeah. One of the benefits of large screen tablets, unlike like a seven inch tablet, is that comic books really shine. Absolutely. And that's primarily like why I exclusively use large screen tablets in order to read my graphic novels and comic books. This is some royalty free music we're just going to use as a sound benchmark. We're going to start with the Nook. So that's the Nook, and we'll move over to the Kindle now. Wow. Yeah, obviously the... You know, that, that's a progressive track, yeah. so it kind of started simple, then started reaching like a crescendo. I'd probably say HDX louder, by far. Louder and better quality. You're paying like over like you're, you're paying close to three bills plus for both of them. That's fair to say. What do you think is the the better investment overall? If you had to pick, I like the Kindle, and that's just because I use it all the time. No, to be fair, uh, the Kindle is very limiting because you have to deal with Amazon. Otherwise, oh, running low on juice. Otherwise, you have to resort to using our awesome app store to download sideloaded content. Whereas on the Nook, you have a you have way too many choices. You have the Samsung apps, Google Play, Nook apps. I mean, there's no shortage of content delivery on this. Uh, it has a lot of account synchronization too. So the Nook account, Google Play account. This is more of a standard Android experience. This is catered towards um, people who have Amazon devices. They're even using a skinned version of Speaking Amazon. of effective use of screen real estate, uh, yeah. how many apps are we like fitting inside of this? Let me just move this carousel if you don't mind. Oh, excuse me. And Yeah, um, these are apps that you probably have never heard of. Wolf Among Us, Angry Bird yeah. Transformers. Yeah, so I would say uh, this just has a lot higher quality to it i mean the camera's better quality the, the speakers are better quality the screen's better quality it's just a little bit smaller than the nook yeah i mean the hdx is super distinctive i mean I, I i i like the fact that over time amazon's really refined their own os and barnes and noble used to have like their own skin version of os but that really changed with uh, the advent of the samsung galaxy tab 4 nook series it's more Samsung branded Android than it is a, a skin version of Android, which yeah. Barnes and Noble did on the HD and HD plus. Stay tuned to uh, youtube.com slash goodyreader for all the latest reviews, comparisons and everything like that. And for a comparison on Amazon Kindle, Kindle the Amazon Fire HDX 8.9 2014 edition versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook 10.1 inch edition. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.